Hey y'all, I'm Amanda. This is the Southern Knits in the Mitt podcast, episode four. This is take three. Take three. I've done this now three times. I don't know what's happening. For some reason, my microphone is not picking up my sound when it's plugged in. Even though I've tested it and it's, it comes through on my test, but when I record the long video, it stops. So I'm gonna try it without my microphone this time. So hopefully it won't mess up and we won't have sound issues. Um, I may just have to get a different kind of microphone, we'll see. So um, this is a knitting podcast and I'm coming to you from Traverse City, Michigan. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Southern Knits in the Mitt and then on Ravelry at Southern Knits in the Mitt podcast. And I'll have all that information in the drop box down below. So did y'all miss me? I missed y'all. So I um, was all set and ready to um, podcast on time last time. And um, my daughter-in-law went into labor. And so my new grandbaby decided that she was tired of life on the inside and made her prison break four weeks early. And so, um, yeah, she was a little bit early and had some complications and had to be in the intensive care nursery. And if you watched any of my other videos, you know in real life, I am a neonatal nurse practitioner. And so I had a really, really hard time stepping out of that practitioner role and just being the grandmother. It was not fun. <laughs> but she is um, home now. She is doing so good. She and her family, her big sister, just love her to pieces. And um, everybody's doing great. So thankfully, 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 everything turned out okay. And she's good to go. So that's like one of the big things I've been doing over these last couple of weeks. I made an unexpected trip home. I was not expecting to um, go home. My, my big trip to go home was planned in April to be there to see her then. And so um, when she had these complications, I decided I had to go. So I had a beach trip already planned during that time with my best friend. So we got to go to the beach and enjoy ourselves down there for a little bit. For just a couple of days, we got to steal away. And uh, we went to um, Navarre Beach in Florida. So my late husband and I, he was stationed in Pensacola when we got married. And so Navarre Beach is kind of real close to my heart. Navarre, Pensacola Beach, and Destin, all of those are like right there together. And probably some of the most beautiful coastline in Florida you'll see on that Gulf Coast right there. It's just gorgeous. So if you ever have the chance to go there, you should go. Um, I'm going to put some pictures in because... We are always up to up to no good, the two of us together. We've been best friends since high school and um, been with each other through thick and thin. And so we had our T-Rex inflatable costumes out and we were out on the beach flying kites and caused a bit of an uproar out there. So we had, we had a really good time though. So hopefully um, there will be more Trixie and Roxanne pictures to come. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like what I've been up to and what else has happened? Um, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was during this little hiatus here and, um, all of my friends in, in up here and my coworkers have all just taken such good care of me, my neighbors, everybody just like reached out and, and gave me some good love for Valentine's Day because it's been my first Valentine's Day by myself. And so, um, I have to show you this one fiber related Valentine's that is so cute from my friend Tammy. Y'all look at it. <laughs> look at his little face. <laughs> so, he's really like soft and curly. Look how curly his little hair is. He's so stinking cute. I cannot wait to find somewhere to put him. Somewhere where I can see him every day, but he needs to be in my office here. Don't you think? I'm going to put him out in the living room or in the in the kitchen where I can see him more because I'm not in this office all the time. So, I got that. I got some good wine and some just good self-care kind of stuff. Chocolate. Of course, chocolate. There's always good self-care, right? So, um, yeah. So, I had, I've had a good few weeks. I had a scary few weeks with the baby and all of that's good now. And so, we're just going to, we're going to accept it and move on and enjoy our time with each other, right? So, let's see. I think that, oh, I'm going to tell you right now. So, I have a new setup here with my um, iPad. 
So, um, Yolanda from Happy Knits told me, she was like, girl, turn your, turn your iPad sideways when you're recording because, like, I noticed when I was editing that what it looked like on my iPad and when I edited it, it was, like, shrunk down a lot. And so, hopefully, this will remedy that situation. Thanks, Yolanda. I appreciate it. <laughs> I need some coaching. I need some coaching for sure, right? So, um, I got a lot of knitting to show you. I got a lot of FOs, I got a lot of whips, and I got a lot of yarn. Um, so remember last month when I said I wasn't going to buy any yarn? That was a lie. It was a big fat lie. I bought yarn. Of course I did, because that's, that's what I do. <laughs> so, we'll get into all the good knits right now. So, let's see. We'll start with Pearl right here. So, Pearl is wearing my Noah shawl. And so, this um, shawl was by Nitty McPurley. And it's a scrappy shawl. Um, the pattern was written for um, the Christmas Advent skeins. Like your little 25, 20, 20 gram minis. And so, that's what it was written for. And I absolutely love this shawl. I had so much fun knitting it. And it was just a blast. And so, I will most definitely knit this one again. Do y'all knit patterns again? I know some people are like a one and done. But if I find a pattern that I really like, I knit it again. Like this shawl right here that I'm wearing. I've, I've knit this a hundred times, it feels like. But, um, so that's what Pearl's got on. Um... Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I, I could not list all the yarns that are in here because a lot of it is scraps. There are some 20 gram minis in here, but a lot of this is just scraps that I used. Um, the first finished object that I will show you, I, I, I showed it to you as a whip last time, and um, I told you that you wouldn't see it in person, so I'm going to put a picture of it in right here. This was um, a present, a birthday present for my nine-year-old granddaughter, and um, this is the Dear Friend Shawl. And here's the pattern, the Dear Friend Shawl. And it was knit in Yarn Cafe Creations, um, her biscotti sock base. And um, the colorway was Huckleberry Pie. It's a great yarn. I love all of her yarns. I've really been pleased with. Um, actually, this shawl has some of her yarns in it. It actually has a Huckleberry Pie in it somewhere. I think maybe right here-ish. But um, I really do like her yarns. So this pattern calls for a skein of DK weight and a skein of fingering weight yarn. I'm not going to show you that part because it's paid for. So what um, what you do is you hold a fingering weight, and then the next section you hold a fingering weight double, and then the next section you hold your DK weight. So I just used one skein of fingering weight, and I straight up played yarn chicken. I was probably about a third of the way through my bind off and ran out of yarn, but I had a little bit, thank God, a little bit of the um, yarn left over, and so I was able to kind of splice that in and move on because I was not ripping back a few rows just to bind off again. So, I made it. It was not fun. I don't like playing yarn chicken. That gives me a lot of anxiety, but I did, I did finish it, and it really turned out cute. So, if I did this pattern for myself, I would go up a needle size because I'm a tight knitter, and um, so it was, it was short. <laughs> it was really small, it, but it looks really good, and it's perfect for her. It's perfect for her size, so she'll do great with it, um, and it would be a good, like, wearing it like this kind of not too bulky in your coat, I think it would be perfect. So, yeah. So, I really liked it. Um, my other whip I'm wearing, so this is the Free Your Fave by Andrea Mallory. And this yarn is by um, Hugh Loco. And this is Color Riot. These are um, mini skeins. Her Color Riot sets are mini skeins. It's 10 20 gram minis and that colorway was sultry which is not in her shop right now but she has other um mini skein sets in there that are just absolutely gorgeous and so this it when I saw this one I bought this last year when I saw it I was like add to cart add to cart <laughs> right now so this shawl has a pico bind off but um 
Again, I was afraid I was going to run out of yarn for the bind off. And so I just did a, a straight finish on it and I did fine. I had a little bit left over, but not a lot. And so I just faded this. This pattern is written for a three color fade, but I just faded this. I just, this is an easy pattern. It's so easy to knit. And once you knit it, you just, you can do whatever you want to with it. And so that's all of the colors. I'm really, really pleased with it. I love this. This has, it's got enough colors in it that I could wear it with anything, I think. And, um, I love it. So, when I, the first time I knit this, I followed the pattern exactly. And I used the three skeins. And I think I used about 160 yard, um, grams of yarn. And so, with these mini skin kits, this is 200 grams. So this, in the pattern, is more of a triangle. And so when, because I've used more yarn, it's more of a little bit of an asymmetrical, but I'm okay with that. I like it. So I just like tie a knot in this longer side and it looks really good. I really like it. So there's that. All of the rest of my whips are um, socks. I mean, not whips, FOs are socks. So, um, this first set of socks, these are my, my, um, Shirley Bryan yarn, my deconstructed fades. These right here comes in two skeins and, um, it fades from one color to the next. And so I had started these, um, on our last podcast and I just finished those. And so... I couldn't use, of course, the whole 50 grams because I never, I just get tired. So I have a good, I have a good whole other repeat left of this. It goes to a gray. And so I'll put that in some other, um, some other project. But what I did with these is so I, um, actually turned these wrong side out. So I'll do a rounded toe. With this yarn, I do toe up. I do a rounded toe. I knit plain vanilla, fish lips kiss heel, knit the leg, and then just a rolled cuff. And so the stockinette side, this is what it looks like. And I love it, but I like the reverse stockinette side better. And so that's that's how I'm gonna wear them, is from the reverse stockinette side. I just I don't know why, but I just love that better. And so that's what I'm gonna do with that. So that's those. And then my other socks. So um, I told you, I showed y'all last time my other socks. The Over the Moon Yarn Company has a Star Trek, Star Trek Sock of the Month, kind of a Star Trek Monthly Sock Club. And so I was able to order the January colorway. And that's what this one is. And um, this is like all of the uniforms, like their uniforms. It's the blue and the red and the yellow. And then this mini skein right here. So I'll hold those up close. So what I wanted to do though, is I wanted to see if I could get a pair of shorties and a pair of longer socks out of this skein because I always have, I never, I never do a whole 50 gram, one sock 50 grams. There's, I get tired of knitting it and I just wanna be done. So I did a pair of shorties and I did the, my shorties, my recipe for my shorties is I did a tubular bind on, cast on, not bind on, <laughs> cast on, a tubular cast on, which I think I really like. I do about 10 rows of a twisted one by one rib and then I do my fish lips kiss heel and then I knit and then I did the rounded toe recipe that I showed y'all last time. Um, I just did it in the reverse. For this and Kitchener the toe. And so that's those. And then here are the longer ones. And I still had yarn left. I probably could have made the leg a smidge longer on these. But again, I was done. And when I'm done, I'm done. So there's those. So I got, you know, they're not like super long, but they're They'll fit over a pair of leggings, right? Into some little boots. And so I just did a gray contrasting heel toe and cuff on those. 
one by one rib. That's like my go-to rib is one by one twisted. I like it. So that's those. So I really enjoyed knitting those. Her yarn really feels so good. So, you know, I told you I missed the February one. And so I did not get it. And I was hoping it was going to be ugly because I didn't get it, which was very mean spirited of me. But, um, and I love it. I saw pictures of it and now I'm super jealous that people have it and I don't. It was called Earl Grey Hot because John Luke Picard is like my favorite Trek person. So I'm there. I hope that you love it, but I did get the March one, so hopefully it'll be here soon, and I'm going to show it. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what it looks like. So, let's go. Let's move to whips, because I got a ton of them. So, last time, I was, I did the shift cowl, and um, I did it out of Malabrigo Arroyo yarn, this yarn right here, and um, I had a ton of it left over, so I wanted to do a matching toboggan. I'm from the south, and I call this a toboggan. Up here, y'all call them hats, and in Canada, you call them toques. Um, we call them beanies sometimes, but we call, I call them toboggans. So this is the shift along toboggan that will go with my um, cowl. And so this pattern is written for two colors. It's written for a main color and then your your second contrasting color. I did two contrasting colors because that's what's in my shawl or in my cowl. So here is, oh man, dropping these balls everywhere. Um, so here is, this is where I was last time, right there. And there we are. I really like it. I did a tubular cast on. That's what the pattern called for. That was the first time I've ever done that, and I really, really like it. And then I've got one more section to do that'll be blue, and then I'll start my decreases. So I think it's really pretty. And I've got a pom-pom that's probably this color right here. And so I may try it with a pom on it. I don't know. Sometimes I like palms, sometimes I don't, so we'll see. But it's super squishy, and I think it's going to be so warm. Um, this is considered a DK weight um, yarn. I've seen thicker DK, but we'll, we'll, we'll go with it, right? So this is, these are my colors. So this is regatta blue, this is talisman, and this is coffee toffee. And what I like about these yarns is they have a lot of variation. You can see all the variation. I really, really like that. So I'm really pleased with this. You know, when I did the um, cow look, I keep getting closer and closer up on this seat. Sorry, I'll be all up in your business in a minute. Um, I didn't love knitting the cowl because it was knit flat and sewn together. I'm liking knitting the hat because it's um, in the round. And so I think I like it a little bit better knitting it in the round. It's not as tedious. Um, it's a beautiful pattern. It's an easy pattern, but when you're knitting it flat, it is, it's a lot of moving yarn. You're moving yarn a lot. And so I think that's maybe what I didn't like. I had wanted to do the, the night shift shawl so bad. I would poke my eyes out if I did it because I think it, it would just, there's no way that big of a project doing this pattern. There's no way I couldn't do it. So I'll stick with these little ones. I really do like this, so I think that it's going to be nice and warm and squishy. So there's that. So my next whip is a new cast on, but I have been, but I've talked about it. So um, this is the fireside pullover um, by Jane Richmond. And so I got the yarn that the, that they recommended, which is the Cascade Eco Wool, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I just got it cast on. This is so soft, it's so light and squishy. This is gonna be a fantastic warm sweater. It's, I'm just gonna love it. So I've just barely gotten started on it. Um, this collar and then the whole upper the whole yoke is one by one rib that's a lot that's a lot of ribbing 
I mean, up until you separate for the sleeves, it's one by one rib. So it's gonna be a minute before I get down to that. I think once I get down to this um, in the round stuck in it, it'll be really, it'll really fly. But this one by one rib business, it's a lot of work. My hands get really tired, um, really tired with it. But I really, really like it. And I think it is going to be, like, it just feels so light. I just am really pleased with, um, with how it's doing. So I'm anxious to see how that turns out. I think it's gonna be perfect. So, okay. So the next whip that I have is um, again, another one that you've seen, but I had not cast it on yet. So this is the rhubarb, rhubarb pie shawl by Abby Knits. And this was a kit that I got from um, Midnight Cravings. And so this color is your main color. And then this right here is a contrasting color, that um, waffle looking pattern right there. And so I've just cast this on. It's a DK weight um, yarn, and this is by Midnight Cravings. And so my main color is called Afternoon Tea. And then my contrasting color is, um, I don't know where it is. It's called Silk Stockings, and I don't know what I did with it. Man, I just had it. This um oh it's in it's in the bag with the with the shawl. I forgot to tell y'all this colorway and I don't um I'll put it in my show notes because I don't think I have the tag right here with it. My bag is a little um jumbled. Oh wait, is this it? Yes, cascade. This is undyed yarn it's undyed and i don't see a colorway on it it's like a gray is this the color 8018 is that what that is col 8018 okay there's that okay so here's the here's the shawl <laughs> One day, y'all, I'll be a professional. Um, okay. So here is, look, I'm all the way at the front of this seat again. Here is the body that I've started, the body of the shawl, and it's the stockinette, and then it has these little blips in it. So I'm really, really liking it. It's so soft. I'm really liking the fabric I'm getting out of it and then the contrasting color is called silk stockings and so it doesn't look like it's going to be a high contrast but this is when i saw the kits this is the one that i saw that and i just really liked it so i think once this gets in that waffle pattern it'll really stand out against this i really i'm really enjoying it it's going pretty quick being a dk shawl so I've, i'm typically like a fingering weight but i think i like dk this goes a lot quicker and it's a good thick. And for up here, I think that's what I might need some, sometimes more than the fingering weight. So I'm anxious to see how that looks. So it's going pretty quick and hopefully it'll, I'll have it done soon because I've got like 14 other shawls that I want to cast on that I have yarn for that I want to cast on. So we'll get there. And then my final whip is, um, a, another pair of socks. So I try to keep a pair of socks on the needles. And so these are just a toe up sock, plain vanilla sock. And this yarn is deep stash. Well, not deep stash. I got it like last year, but it is, um, it came in two fifty gram cakes like this. And it is, um, from knit picks and it is Sock Labs, the Stroll Gradient Duos. I looked on their website and they don't have the duos anymore. They've got the Stroll Gradient, but not the duos. But I love this yarn. Um, the first pair of them that I knit, I have it, um, they're at home in Alabama. But they were, like when I was knitting them, I felt like the fabric was not, I didn't really love it. I felt like it was kind of loosey goosey. But when these wash, they bloom that that yarn blooms and they are so 
warm and so cozy. It's almost like they've got like a, a mohair in them, but they don't. This is um, 75 75% fine superwash merino and 25% nylon. And so maybe that's why, because it's the fine superwash. But I love this. I love how they do. So that's my pair of socks on. And I won't use this whole thing because it's 50 grams and there's no way I'll get that. I'll do that much. I'll probably get to about right there and then I'll be done because <laughs> I'm impatient. So there we go with that. So I, will, I was going to, I want to kind of talk a little bit about um, tools that I use um, for my knitting and because um, I have gotten some really good suggestions and found some really neat stuff that I love to use and I found them through podcasts. So I'll, I'm just going to start with needles this week and then the next podcast I'll go into some of the other tools that I like to use. So my go-to, um, I always use circular needles now whether I'm knitting in the round or flat. I always use circular needles and my go-to now since I have found the Chalgo needles are my Chalgos. I love them. They are um, metal needles and they come this is I have all three times I have filmed this podcast I have thrown this needle on the floor <laughs> so there we go it wouldn't be a podcast if it didn't happen right so um these are all interchangeable and so it comes with the lace cables and then it comes with two sizes. So the smaller needles have a smaller diameter cable and then the larger needles have a larger diameter cable. And I think I kind of like that. Um, what it does is where these join into the needle is a lot smoother than when um, in my other ones, my bigger needles on the cables, sometimes the, the join isn't as smooth. So I appreciate that they have the different size cables. So, their smaller sizes fit with the smaller, and then these bigger ones fit on that big. So, uh, this is this is my go-to. As a matter of fact, um, I've had to, I've actually bought a couple of the sizes that I use a lot. I've bought a couple extra. You can buy just the tips themselves or just the cables, and I've bought a couple of extras just so that I don't have to swap needles in and out of of working projects that I've got going on all the time. Um, my first set of interchangeable needles that I bought ever, I really, and I loved these when I first bought them and I still like them. And this is, um, this is pronounced Luca, Luca. And so, um, these are driftwood needles and they're an interchangeable set. And I really do. I love these too. I don't love the cable, but I think that um, once you do a Chalgu cable, you there's not a lot of cables that you're going to like. But these are a driftwood, and they're really smooth. I really, really like them. They're good. They're um, So, the metal ones are a little bit slicker. These have a little bit of grab to them. So, sometimes, um, depending on the yarn, I do like a, a, like a needle that has a little bit more grab to it. So that's my other, that's my other set of needles. And I go back and forth. I do go back and forth between the two. If um, I'm needing tips that out of my child goose set that are on something else, I'll grab these and use those. Um, so yeah, that's my needles. So we're gonna talk about all this yarn over here. But I have good, I have good, I have good good news with yarn too, right? It's gonna be. So Yolanda over at Happy Knits featured Turtle Pearl yarns, and um, so I ordered some, and then I ordered some more. Of course I did, right? And so when um, my second, with my second order, I reached out to um, to them and told them that I was a podcaster, and so they gave us a coupon code. And so this is, um, this is her logo right there and she's on Etsy. I'll, I'll link her shop down below. And so this is, um, you can either get the yarn like this. This is two 
50 gram skeins. They're self-striping. When you wind them up, they will start the same and so you will have identical socks when you knit them. So you can either get it like this or with the mini. So of course I'm gonna choose the mini. Why wouldn't I do that, right? So what I like about her yarn is that she puts a schematic of what it looks like when it's knit. And I appreciate that because sometimes, you know, when you look at a skein of yarn, you don't, you don't know what it's going to look like. And more times than not, a lot of times I don't like it when it's, <laughs> when it's knit up, I get really frustrated. But what the other thing I like about her yarn is that the stripes are not all the same size. So I really like that. So I've got hmm, three. I think three more of these coming. What am I gonna do with all these socks? <laughs> I guess I'm gonna wear a new pair every day, right? <laughs> so anyway, so she gave us a coupon code and it is SKMIT, M-I-T-T. SKMIT and it is for 10% off and there's not an expiration on it. So I will make sure all of that is linked down below so that you can take advantage of that. That was so super sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so remember last time when I told you about all that Char Shirley Bryan yarn and I wasn't going to show it to you then? I'm going to show it to you now. So these are all the deconstructed fades that I bought, like my Herding Cats ones, okay? So, Shirley Bryan. I don't think that's a T-Rex. I think that's a Velociraptor. That doesn't look like my T-Rex costume right there at all. I think it's a Velociraptor. Okay, so this is called You're So Vain. You probably think these socks are for you. <laughs> and they're not. They're for me. I love that. Okay, these are called Don't Call Us Plucky. We Don't Know What It Means. Isn't that pretty? I love, these will be great for fall. These will be great for fall. Love for analog. And you look at that and you're like, oh, I don't know about that. It knits up so beautifully. When you go to her website, she has, on her yarns, she has a, a tube of it knit out so you can see what it looks like. It's really pretty. And then these are called Olive and Me. And then this one is called, okay, is it The Pound is Silent? The hashtag is silent. <laughs> I'm not hip. I don't know what it means. But look at this. That's blue green. That's not black or navy blue. That's a green. I can't wait to get those knit. But yeah. I love them. And I have a crap ton of them. So I'm going to be knitting me some socks. I may find somebody that's got a tube and go get some tubes cranked because it's so much. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, I think we're going to talk about a couple of podcasts and just a couple of little last minute housekeeping things and we're going to be done. We can wrap this up. Um, podcasts. So, last time I told you about Chip and Aaron over at the Fiber Hustle. So, I have been binge watched all of theirs. They're fantastic. If you need a good laugh, that's who you need to go see. They're, they're really, really funny. I really enjoyed watching them. Um, Chip is a quilter, Aaron is a knitter, and so they have some beautiful, beautiful things over there that they showcase, and so I've really enjoyed them. The other podcast that I have binge watched and finally finished all their episodes is The Bearded Pearl, Caleb and Justin. They're a hoot too, so go watch them. I've really enjoyed watching them. They have, um, they're doing some tutorials now. They have a lot of knowledge. They have a lot of, um, a lot of good tips, so... I've, I've learned a lot from them. And then the two podcasts now that I am watching and binge watching are Happy Knits, Yolanda over at Happy Knits, and then the girls at Cocktail Hour at the Coop. So I've really, um, I've just started watching them. So I'm going back and forth between Yolanda and them. So they have been, those have been really fun to watch and um, learning tons of stuff and finding even more things that I want to knit. But I just want to say thank you so much to Yolanda over at Happy Knits. 
Um, she sent so many viewers over to me and I appreciate all of y'all coming over and, um, just showing me some love. It's just, y'all have touched my heart and I really appreciated all of your kind, kind comments and, um, just sweetness. I've just really enjoyed it. And so thank you for coming by. Um, so to all of my subscribers, thanks for hitting that subscribe button. If you're new here, Thank you for dropping by. Hit that subscribe button. That's the um, notification bell. will let you know when a new podcast is up. And share this video. Give it a thumbs up. And I appreciate y'all coming by. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.